So whatever it takes to keep him on the floor, that's what's got to happen. Warriors! Come out to play! Yeah! It's like that! The NBA's race to the playoffs has now begun. And then Steph, that's as emotional as you'll ever see him. And the competition is starting to become unhinged. We are now just 21 days away from the postseason. And this week in the NBA just changed everything. I'm glad you're here because, oh my goodness, chapter one. Last Saturday, I have become death, destroyer of worlds. On Saturday, the NBA started the week off with a bang. In Houston, the largest metropolis in Texas, we had another Jalen Green explosion. As soon as the game started, it was obvious that this man had one goal in mind, destroy everything. The guys behind him finds one of them. <laughs> it's too easy. It's too easy. And when he wasn't reading the rim its rights, he was delivering third degree burns with no look threes. Oh my goodness. No look. The resurgence of Jalen Green, from flashing bust potential earlier on in the year to now entering the realm of the stars, has been one of the best stories in the NBA this year. This was a Rockets game, so of course it couldn't end without another scuffle. Uh oh, we got another one. The Rockets are undefeated in games this season in which they've been involved in some altercations, shall we say. The Jazz tried to live by the three, but ended up dying by it, as they shot 29% on 37 attempts attempts from deep, and to add insult to injury, the man who they call Steady Freddy fed Utah a steady dose, detonating for 10 triples. When you're playing a team like, oh my from goodness. The, of Toyota Center. <laughs> the Rockets were favored by 10 and a half, and they delivered a 28-point beatdown to the Jazz. It's now a race between the Rockets and the Warriors for that last play-in spot. Meanwhile, in the city of Big Shoulders, we found DeRozan prioritizing his percentages over making the right play. No shot that he was gonna shoot it. Unacceptable. The officials, on the other hand, had every NBA fan screaming that this is why we can't have nice things. Terry, good ball movement. And Terry, Terry, what has gotten into you, Dalen Terry? He just got teed up for oh, hanging on. on the rim. Come on, they do this all every night in the NBA. I tell you, sometimes the officiating just makes you just want to scream. This was Boston's fifth game in seven nights. They were missing Drew Holiday, Kristaps Porzingis, and Jalen Brown, but they still dominated the Bulls. Oh. Oh. To Come Give on. it to him. Give me something. That is just how good this team is. Credit to Brad Stevens for managing to finesse his way into building this Goliath of a team. The Celtics were favored by five and won by 11. After the game, Boston's three-point sniper had this to say. Yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of our team. You know, anybody can step in and play, you know, 30 minutes a night. No, we're just hungry for more, and uh, we're, it's not in our, you know, character to just, like, mail it in for the rest of the season. But when we checked in on the Tankathon, we found the Raptors and the Wizards fighting for the right to lose the game. Kelly Olenek, just a bit outside. I thought G. Wiz was on the team. <laughs> These teams are not serious, as they even sent an invite to the rim for a new position as sixth defender on the court. Trent Jr. got some space and oh, misses man. the dunk. At the end of the game, Jordan Poole decided to add to the RSVP list, choosing to invite Corey Kispert to the pool party as well. Pick up the double. Good pass. Kispert, corner three. I mean, Jordan Poole facilitating that to the T, Chris. The Raptors had a chance to tie, so they decided the best course of action would be to give the last shot to their worst three-point shooter. Crazy endings here in Washington. Bruce Brown lets it fly, doesn't go. Meanwhile, while Bol Bol was having it up to here with Victor. So the shot clock. And Victor draws the foul. Second foul on Bol. Mikel Bridges decided to remind DeRozan why you always take the shot at the end of the quarter. Here's Bridges. Bridges gets it off. And nails it! That's why you shoot it at the end of the quarter! Mikel Bridges! 
But the most ridiculous ending was in Orlando. This was the Jonathan Isaac game. Whether it was defense or offense, whatever the coach needed, Isaac delivered. Isaac fakes the three, drives the middle, left-handed shot. The game was as tight as two coats of paint, with Sabonis tying Kevin Love for the longest double-double streak since the ABA and NBA merger of 1976. 53 straight games with a double-double. No foul on that. Boy, there's a wrestling match inside. Sabonis lays it home. Monstrous. But the game ended with controversy, with the ref buffering before sending Fox to the line. In this game, Fox, he got fouled. That was a push by Suggs. Jamal Mosley wants to challenge, not sure that he can. This decision by the ref gave the Kings the lead. And on the final play, Banquero would try to get revenge. Ingles to trigger. Banquero gets it off. And Sacramento bounces back once again with the win in Orlando. Orlando was favored by three, but ended up losing by two. My fellow goats, the biggest tournament in college basketball is underway, and the action is starting to get spicy in partnership with DraftKings Sportsbook. New customers are getting a shot at bigger and bigger payouts. If you are a new customer and you bet just $5 on anything, you will score $150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings app now and sign up using my code GOAT to receive this offer. You can even use your $150 in bonus bets on DraftKings' same game parlays or combine multiple bets together from the same game, including total points scored, number of rebounds by your favorite player, and more. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have the shot to win cash prizes. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use my promo code GOAT to instantly get $150 in bonus bets after betting just $5. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Please gamble responsibly. And thanks to DraftKings for sponsoring this part of the video. Chapter 2, Sunday Night, Fear the Deer. As the curtains were setting on the weekend, Sunday night in the association delivered an unparalleled level of domination. In Milwaukee, we finally saw what the Bucks might look like down the stretch at full strength. Lock pass. Yeah. Is it through with a thunderous one hand slam, and there is that cash money to Greek Freak connection again. This team has been plagued by injuries up and down the roster, but tonight they had their full chest of weapons available. Three pointer from Dean. Count that one with a foul. Four point play opportunity. OKC's lack of size proved to be their Achilles heel as they posted their lowest point total and yeah. lowest shooting percentage of the season. Poor Chet Holmgren was battling yeah. against three behemoths. And let's just say it wasn't a fair fight. Get middle, jump hook. There you go. Bobby Get middle, Portis. jump hook. Deposits that one right over Chet Holmgren. He gave the two small sign. And I'll tell you what. Shea Gilgius Alexander, the man who can't not score 30, was held to just 12 points. The domination got so bad that in the third quarter, the Thunder didn't score a field goal until the five minute mark. You hear the parts on it from plays like this, leaving that skin on the floor of Beasley. Now Giannis counter with another one. Come on, defense to offense, and the Bucks lead by 13. That's that hustle that you love to see. But the peak of the game was in the fourth, where Doc tried to take Middleton out when he was just one point away from getting his second career triple-double. Chris is right in the middle of making a move. <laughs> Chris is saying, I got a triple-double on the line here. Let's go. Bro staged a full protest, and in the end, it paid off. Chris Middleton staying on the floor looking for just the second triple-double. Oh, yeah, there it is. Well, Cash Middleton gets his second Foul career triple-double. After the win, Giannis had this to say. I think I just grow this, this appreciation feeling of having everybody healthy and available to play. Now we're all here. There's no more excuses. we got to keep on playing good basketball. Uh, hopefully, we can the Bucks were favored by six, but they ended up winning by 25 points. However, when we visited Hollywood, we witnessed a performance that we haven't seen in 37 years. The spark that ignited the forest fire was this Kodak moment from Siakam. Oh, Siakam! One hand rising jam, and he knocks down two Lakers like bowling pins. Way to punish them. The last time Andrew Nembhard was in LA, this happened. Halliburton. Nemhard away! Got it, baby! Got it! The rookie Hopkins <laughs> yeah. hits the three at the what buzzer to win the game! Baby. And this time he was causing problems all over the court again. Pacers have a five on three. Nemhard lays it in. 
The Lakers, however, had a different plan this time. Operation Unibrow. Out of a double team to score. Davis goes right there with the one-hand jab. Anthony Davis was a man amongst boys, shooting a ridiculous 71% from the field. And even though the chosen one still dropped 26 points, his biggest contribution was him setting the table for everyone else. And AD is there, too easy for the late show. LA's controversial free throw discrepancy was strong in this one. Austin Reeves alone almost shot as many free throws as the entire Pacers team. Oh, Austin goes all the way, count it! Austin gets an and one! The Lakers were gifted 27 more free throws than the Pacers. On their way to scoring an insane 150 points, their franchise's highest scoring performance in 37 years. After the five point loss, the Pacers head coach wasn't exactly thrilled. I thought our guys really battled in this game. There there were just certain things that were impossible to overcome. A 27 free throw differential is one, and a 17 foul differential is the other. And I'll leave it at that. While the Cavs were baking turnovers and exchanging them for dimes. And a steal by Ben. Bouncing for Jovic. What a play! A perfect one bounce connection between Bam Adebayo and Niko Jovic. Trouble was piling up for the Warriors. The first victim was Pojemski. Oh no. Conley! The second victim was the Dubs' defense, as the Warriors allowed the Wolves to drain 21 threes on the night. Spam by Alexander Walker, Conley for three, cash! And lastly, the third victim was the Warriors' play-in hopes, which are dwindling with each loss. The Warriors gave it their best effort. Still a single possession ball game. Steph for the tie. Off back iron, GP2, how about a reload? Steph Curry has tied it up! And with the Rockets breathing down their necks for that final play-in spot, it was up to Clay to deliver. This is Steph Curry time. Flare screen again. Thompson, a look, short, rebound, Edwards. He's wrapped up and fouled. The Timberwolves were favored by five and squeaked out a win by four points. These are tough days for Warriors fans. Chapter three, Monday night, Hall of Famers crumble with tensions rising and stakes higher than ever. Monday night's NBA action delivered a roller coaster of insane comebacks and collective meltdowns. First of all, in Hotlanta, the Celtics came in on a nine-game winning streak. The Green Leprechauns were the hottest team in the association, as they had also just won 20 of their last 22 games as well. And from the outset, they pounced on the Hawks, burying them under a 30-point deficit by the second quarter. Has the matchup he wants, isolates, drives! and throws it down! At halftime, Coach Quinn Snyder reminded his team that Anytime you're down that much, you know, you have to do something, you know, out of the ordinary a little bit. Um, to get back in the game. And in the second half, it was clear that his team had heard him. The soaring Hawks started turning defense into offense. Picked off by Murray. DeJounte going in on Hauser. Leaves it for Capella. Coming out of halftime. Oh, and a steal by Bogey. He'll turn and fire. Hits the three. Our Celtics caught him sleeping again. And before you knew it, that insurmountable deficit was beginning to dwindle. Tip pass by Murray. Here's feet. DJ! Make them pay! Make them pay! <laughs> On the Celtics side, frustration finally peaked, and the Hawks color analysts were delivering a stand-up special. Boy, Jason Tatum does a lot of complaints. Who does he think he is, Caitlin Clark? But at the end of the game, in a moment of sheer audacity, DeAndre Hunter decided to throw caution to the wind. After this offensive rebound, Hunter could have held the ball and forced the Celtics to foul. But instead, the man decided to go straight for the jugular to secure the W. Tip Capella! He gets it out to Hunter for three! <laughs> That's a dagger! The Celtics, favored by 10 and a half, found themselves on the receiving end of a humbling defeat, falling short by just two points. Meanwhile, in the Big Easy, Deuce McBride decided to start off the night on a trolling spree. Oh, McBride throws it off Flynn, who wasn't paying attention. The Pistons, being the worst team in the league, decided they were not about to let anyone out-tank them, putting Cade, Duran, Thompson, and Stewart all on the injury list. All these factors created the perfect storm for the Big Ragu to take advantage. Dante Vincenzo decided to kill two milestones with one game. The first and less impressive milestone was scoring his first 40-point game. DiVincenzo, three-pointer, punch it in! There it is! Now he 
Murray's tied the record. The second and more impressive milestone was him setting a new franchise record for the Knicks. Here's a three. Bang! There it is, number 11. Dante DiVincenzo, a new Knicks record for most threes in the game. The game was a win-win for all parties involved. The Pistons got to advance their tank, while the Knicks were able to stay within half a game of that desirable third seed that currently belongs to the Cavs. But the real hilarity started after the game. You're getting lots of love for sure, too. And one of the things that was so special about it was watching the way that your teammates were feeding you tonight. How would you describe the unselfishness? Clearly, they wanted to see you get this record, too. Um, I mean, if Jalen passed the ball more, I could have had probably 15 of them tonight. But Coach Monty was salty about the whole thing. I don't care about their team at all. Uh, it could, I could care less. The way they got those threes, I don't want to be a part of that story. So Josh Hart fired back at Monty saying, if he didn't want to be part of the story, he should have told his guys to defend better. However, while the Joker was taking the long road to outsmarting everyone. Got it. Jokic! And Jokic <laughs> goes into the shooting motion. That is the 800th career steal for Nikola Jokic. Jalen Green almost went full Hiroshima on the Blazers. Green! Tried to punch it on Brown, couldn't get it to go as a ricochet out. But nothing was as ridiculous as what Sabonis had to endure to have the longest streak of double-doubles in NBA history. Oh, taking that knee to the midsection, got hit in the shoulder on an overturned foul call, and then took a shot to the side of the head, drawing blood from DJ Wilson. Outside of that, it's been an easy night for him. At the end of the night, we witnessed the unthinkable. The Suns, a team full of future Hall of Famers, were battling with the worst team in the world. West. To sell the poke away and the steal. Durant chasing. Oh, mama. And to add insult to injury, Wemby was out with a sprained ankle. Phoenix walked in like they already had this game in the bag. And then they got punched in the face immediately. <laughs> Off the window and good. Wow. And Bissell putting on a show now. San Antonio went on a 16 0 run between the third and fourth quarters. And the Suns had to rely on KD and Booker to bring them back. But when it mattered most, it was Jeremy Sohan who proved to be the big kahuna. Six of the shot clock. Look at going to the basket. basket. Sohan for three. Oh my goodness! <laughs> the globe is good! 104, 102, Spurs by two! But the Hall of Famers would get a chance to redeem themselves. Back out, Durant. Three seconds, Booker. No, rebound, Spurs! Oh! The Suns were favored by 12, but ended up losing by two points. This was their last easy game for a long time, as they now set their sights on facing 10 consecutive playoff-bound teams while desperately holding on to the eighth seed. Chapter 4. Tuesday Night. Come back for the ages. On Tuesday, the NBA scheduled a legendary slate of games, and the results were exactly that. Legendary. In the 305, the Warriors faced off against the Hospital Heat. Jimmy Butler, Tyler Harrow, Kevin Love, and Duncan Robinson were all out for one reason or another. So Bam decided to shoulder the heavy load, continuing his newfound role as a three-point marksman. Oh, that's a jumper for Bam. Well, Bam out of bio with eight first quarter points. And when he wasn't busy putting up his 24 points in the game, he was anchoring the defense with ferocity. Bam with a block on green scoop. Draymond, on the other hand, had his therapist increasing his hourly rate for the next session. It looks like they're going to call it on Draymond Green, who, boy, oh boy, did he grab Patty Mills, looked like by the throat here. And even though Steph pulling from the logo and Kuminga becoming a human trampoline were impressive. Curry shot it from Biscayne Bay and drops in a three. That was on the C for Heat culture. Oh, what a dunk! The spike from Kaminga has the bench going nuts! No, oh, like he was dropped out of the skies. The biggest story from this game was Clay finally returning to the starting lineup. After coming off the bench for months now, Clay saw this opportunity and took it by the horns, going off for 28 points on great efficiency. That's the zone buster right there. Clay tops it, drop it in a three. Don't leave that guy! To lead the Warriors to a commanding 21 point victory, moving a full game ahead of Houston in the race for the final play-in spot. Meanwhile, in the Big Easy, the Thunder were visiting the
the Pelicans. This game was a game of runs, and by the third quarter, OKC had amassed a 20-point lead, with Chet deciding that Trey Murphy didn't have the correct ID for this party. Murphy to move, Murphy flies up and got denied at the top. An incredible two-handed block from Holmgren. However, the Pelicans would respond, going on a 20-2 run to claw their way back into the game. Herb's got a crease, and on the Euro, unbelievable reverse, incredible. Good cut by Herb. Yeah. Find the Ooh. He's got Trey wide open, a three. Got it! Timeout OKC. But it was in clutch time where things got crazy. The refs started missing calls so blatant that even Stevie Wonder would have caught. They weren't going to blow the whistle. Ooh, that's a carry. They let it go right in front of us. It'll be getting. He's already got a career best in triples. Dort for the lead. Makes it. That was a carry. Zion didn't take a shot in the final three minutes. As the Thunder went on a 12-0 run to finish the game, it was a complete unraveling by the Pelicans, who missed their final five shots in a very close game. The Thunder, favored by just one point, ended up securing a commanding seven-point victory. After the game, Zion tried to take responsibility for the loss. We were kind of stagnant, and I definitely got to demand the ball more in those situations. However, in Sacramento, we had a very important game. The Mavs and the Kings came into the game with the same record, 42 and 29. The winner of this game would get the sixth seed, whilst the loser would fall back into the play-in bracket. Luca started the game off like he knew what was at stake. Doncic for three, filthy. Wonderboy scored 26 of his 28 points in the first half alone, and Uncle Drew had everyone wondering whether he was still the Robin to Luca's Batman. Step back, Irving, lightning. The Kings had no answer for the Dallas duo, as the Mavs rained down an impressive 22 of 39 attempts from downtown, marking a season-best success rate of 56.4% from three. It was a complete demolition, a 36-point beatdown to be exact, with the Mavs even having time for pranks during the game. And after the game, Luka finally responded to the long, unanswered question. You're hearing the MVP shouts from your teammate. We talked to Jason Kidd pregame, and he called you Superman. He called Kyrie Batman. What's that chemistry been like between you two superheroes on this team? Oh, uh, he's the best man on the Robins. But the real showstopper of the night unfolded in Milwaukee. The last time the Bucks and the Lakers faced each other, this happened. Russell gets past Lillard with seven. Floater, good! Russell gives the Lakers a one-point lead with 5.9 remaining. Lillard, step back, blocked by Dinwiddie! But tonight, the Bucks had home court advantage, and they were out for blood. Lucky for them, LeBron was out of commission with left ankle issues. And from the outset, Milwaukee came out swinging. This was at the combo against Davis. What a matchup. Oh there goodness. extends hard two-handed flush. That was length on length, and he just straight moves Anthony Davis out of the way. Midway through the fourth, they were obliterating the blue and gold by 19 points. But it was at that moment where everything changed. It was one of those moments that you could either flip the page to tomorrow, get ready for that game, or you can go out and compete 110% and give yourself an opportunity to get back in the game. Austin Reeves came back into the game guns blazing. Five point game. Oh, wow. Reeves for three. Yes! Logo yes! Three. Austin! It's a two point game. Two point game! You talking about a long distance delivery. Woo! And before you knew it, the game was tied. Both teams got a chance to win the game at the buzzer. Giannis can't score! We're going to overtime! In overtime, Anthony Davis activated his Manjekio Sharingan. Lillard into the paint. Davis got a piece of it! But Dame Time said overtime was his time. Lillard! Milwaukee retakes the lead! Before meeting the brow at the apex. Dame will win the game! Blocked by Davis! Anthony Davis! In double overtime, Hillbilly Kobe, the man who ignited the comeback in the first place, would deliver the dagger. Reeves for the lead! Reeves for the lead! 
And when Giannis found himself at the charity stripe, he also had to face the pressure, as well as LeBron from the sidelines. Not a great free throw shooter. He's one for four tonight. There you go. That's why it was a great five. five. <laughs> a great five. It was a Herculean effort. AD played a ridiculous 52 minutes, leading the Lakers to a stunning four-point victory. Chapter 5, Wednesday night. God damn it, Draymond. From booze in Philly to cheers in Charlotte, Hump Day and the Association served up a spectacle. Beginning in Orlando, the Warriors rolled into town to take on one of the most dominant home clubs in the league. And with the dub season hanging in the balance, Draymond somehow managed to get himself ejected just three minutes into the game. Now you get a, a tech here. Draymond's going to get a T. Draymond's got to be careful here. Yeah. You're already down Kaminga. Well, Steph got one T early. Steve just took a timeout. Got multiple guys from the Warriors bench just coming over just to make sure Draymond doesn't go over the line here. He got another attack. He's, He's gone. He just got ejected. With 8:24 remaining in the first, Steph's reaction said it all. And Steph was trying to calm him down along with some of the other Warriors, but to no avail utter disappointment with Kuminga nursing a sore knee and Draymond taking an early shower. The Warriors had to rally their defensive troops and rally they did. Here comes Suggs 100 miles an hour and DP2 sent it away. Payton with a block. Despite shooting like they had butterfingers, they out-rebounded the Magic 52-39. Yet the Magic seemed intent on giving away the game, missing 10 free throws at the charity stripe. Steph took this donation and stepped up to the plate, putting the Magic to sleep. Steph for three. Got it! Of course. Put him to sleep. Night, night. The closer. Before unleashing his emotions on a chair. And then Steph, and that's as emotional as you'll ever see him. After the game, he got real about the situation. The, the camera showed you pretty frustrated when he did get ejected. No, I said, we need, we need him. He knows that. We all know that. So whatever it takes to keep him on the floor uh, and be available, that's what's got to happen. You don't want to have self-inflicted wounds when it comes to that. The Magic were favored by four, but ended up losing by eight points. Meanwhile, in the land of thunderous applause, the Rockets came in with the swagger of a team on fire, riding a nine-game winning streak. But things started icy cold, with Isaiah Joe handing Uncle Jeff a senior citizen violation. It's a two-on-one. On the break, Isaiah Joe signs it up green, throws it down! And if there's one thing you can count on in a Rockets game, it's drama. And see Jabari's frustrated, he's looking over and but he's like, hey, I'm, I'm gonna help you up, man. <laughs> you can't force it, I guess. And Here we go. Every night is fight night for the Rockets play. Brooks racked up his 14th tech of the season, putting him that much closer to a suspension. Jalen Green, on the other hand, emerged from the chaos igniting the Rockets. Splits two, drives, hangs, bangs it! But that was up until the final minutes of regulation, when OKC woke up with Giddy pulling off a seated shot. Oh, Giddy, from the back side, he was on his back. Wait, did he do what I just thought he did? On his backside? Before his brother in crime, fourth quarter dub, sank the three to tie and force OT. Ball to J-Dub. J-Dub around one defender, puts it up for the tie! But the Rockets weren't about to let their winning streak slip away that easily. In overtime, it was the Jalen Green show. Bro had me jumping out of my chair when he sent Giddy back to Australia. Blitz it! Drive! Green's 37-point masterpiece was enough to secure Houston's 10th straight victory. OKC was favored by five and lost by six points, as their winless streak in games without Shea Gilgis Alexander persisted. But Coach Udoka wasn't about to downplay his team's impressive run. Ten in a row is ten in a row, regardless if Shea is out or um, whatever the case may be. The Rockets are coming for the Warriors, and they aren't hiding it either. Warriors! Come out to play! Warriors, come out to play! Yeah, it's like that! Over in the city of brotherly love, Harden was welcomed back with booze instead of brotherly love after forcing his way out of Philly. The Sixers seem to be sailing smoothly towards victory. From way outside! But then, like a bolt out of the blue, Kawhi Leonard happened. Leonard, 
Around Batum to the rack. Hit. Counted on a foul. Wow! But it was in the dying moments of the game when the real fireworks erupted. A no foul call on the last play left Nick Nurse and Kelly Oubre seeing red. Oubre off the bounce, drives inside, goes for the layup, and a wedgie. It's stuck in there. It'll be a jump ball with 5.1 remaining. Boy, there's certainly there some is. contact from Kawhi Leonard. With Oubre channeling his inner Cartman with a colorful display of words. You can't challenge a non call, yeah. so no replay. Nurse is hot. He is fuming, and They've his been assistant awful. coach, Brian been, Gates, having to keep him away from the officials. They've Alan. been awful all night. All night. I don't blame him one bit. That was some terrible, terrible officiating. The officiating crew later admitted a foul should have been called, but it was too little too late. After the game, Oubre took responsibility. First and foremost, um, heated a moment. Uh, this is an intense basketball game, of course. And, you know, we're not perfect. The refs aren't perfect. I want to apologize for just losing my cool. The Clippers were favored by six and a half and walked away with a controversial one point win. And while Anthony Edwards was busy putting defenders in his personal torture chamber. Which way did he go? Edwards putting the moves and getting the bucket. Miles McBride was turning into a human flamethrower, raining down six triples in the first quarter alone. Here's McBride from three. Deuce McBride with six. Three point field goals. And over in Memphis, LeBron's war against Father Time continued, and Scottie Pippen's son was collateral damage. On one. Gigi Jackson, the youngest player in the league, finally got to play against his idol LeBron, the oldest player in the game. Months before this game, Gigi had this to say about the day he'd face his idol for the first time. After everything that you've, we talked about Steph and Draymond, um, is it still gonna be cool when you get to play LeBron or is that you think gonna be kind of like, Oh, definitely. Like, if he falls to the ground, you might see me trying to help him up. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> and when they finally went one-on-one, -on -one, LeBron just had to do this. <laughs> GG Jackson, there it was. There was the matchup. The oldest player against the youngest player in the NBA. However, in Charlotte, the Hornets had finally had enough of playing the role of the league's punching bag, and they made sure everyone knew it right from the get-go. Here comes Bridges! Brandon Miller emerged as the chief architect of destruction, wielding his sledgehammer. Yes! Brandon Miller! And with a slim lead in hand, the Hornets turned to Miller once again, and he didn't disappoint. Miller's career-high seven three-pointers and 31-point performance must have felt like sweet vindication for the Hornets, who had faced their fair share of criticism for drafting him. The Cavs were favored by nine and a half, but fell short by seven points as the Hornets snapped their five-game losing streak. Chapter six, Thursday night, Godzilla vs. Kong. As the week approached its climax, Thursday night delivered a double dose of drama and dynamism. In Atlanta, the Celtics thought they'd fix their reputation after that humiliating debacle against the Hawks in the last game. Tip Capella, he gets it out to Hunter for three. <laughs> That's a dagger. But turns out the hospital hawks are the Celtics' kryptonite. The Celtics walked into a leprechaun trap manned by DeJounte Murray. DJ was supposedly nursing a sore lower back, but Bogdanovich knew better. One thing about DJ, he never quits. Never. Whenever I see like, like he's questionable, I'm like, Oh, he's good. <laughs> he is good. <laughs> the Celtics threw the entire kitchen sink at the Hawks. Chance for the last shot. Oh, JP! That's another to his poster collection. But Murray and his squad had an answer at every turn. 4.35 to play. The Hawks looking to go in front. Three-pointer for DJ. Bingo! Over his buddy, Derek White. And if Murray wasn't causing enough trouble, his wingman was more than ready to join the fray. Hey. Rebound Hunter. 
kicks, bogey for three. Ties the game at 112 with 26.7. These Hawks will not quit. However, in clutch time, Tatum had a shot at redemption, but instead he added another dud to his collection, sending the game to overtime. And in that extra period, Murray officially assumed control. After scoring all of Atlanta's 11 points in OT, this man then decided to ice the game with a cold-blooded dagger. It's Holiday. It's Murray from the top. Go! It was a ridiculous game from DJ, a career-high 44 points on 44 shots. And after the game, he gave his justification for taking so many shots. I don't want to take that many shots, but I know Kobe will be proud of me. The Celtics were favored by 16, but lost by one point, with the Hawks being the only team they have lost to twice this season. Meanwhile, in New Orleans, Larry Nance thought it was the perfect time to make some convenient deposits at the bank. But Larry, get it up in time, off the glass! Very resourceful. And while Godzilla and Kong were premiering at the theater, the NBA had its own Godzilla versus Kong battle. Bucks versus Pelicans. The Greek Freak versus Xanos. The Bucks had just lost their previous game. So Giannis wanted this bounce back win bad. And he proved it by scoring 20 straight Bucks points to close the third quarter. Here's to Giannis. And there's your New Orleans highlight. Door cut and Giannis with the throwdown. Absolutely absurd. The Pels, on the other hand, matched the aggressiveness, relentlessly attacking Milwaukee at the rim. He's trying to get there. That's being Go aggressive. Ahead. Right, that's being aggressive. Because I felt like he's bailed him out a couple times. As a result, they got to the line 15 more times than the Bucks. Favored by two, the Bucks lost by seven points. And after a hard-fought battle, Z had to give Giannis his flowers. Man, uh, I thought I attacked the basket. He attacks with force. And then he gets to the free throw line and he has a high motor. Um, I gotta give him his respect on that. He has a high motor and he's always on the attack. Chapter seven, Friday night. Mofo should have drafted me. As the sun set on another week of NBA action, Friday night erupted with a fusion of experience and youth. In San Antonio, the stage was set for an epic showdown as Brunson unleashed a career high 61 point storm. Brunson puts up a three. Pucks it in, Jalen Brunson with a 50 point masterpiece. Spins jumper, bangs it in. Jalen Brunson, the gift that keeps on giving. But Wembenyama wasn't about to let him steal all the spotlight. He decided to light up the Knicks with a career-high 40-point spectacle, sprinkling in some money shot trifectas for the Spurs. Fires for three. Got it! Wemby's performance was so impressive, it marked the first 40-point, 20-rebound game by a rookie since Shaquille O'Neal in 1993. He even capped it off by tossing the ball into the crowd, sealing the Spurs' victory in overtime. Brunson had no choice but to give him his due respect. He's going to be one of the greatest players this game has seen, just the way he's built and what he's been able to do so far. So, um, Got a lot of respect for him. Meanwhile, in Sac Town, the Mavericks rolled into town with one mission to dodge that dreaded play in tournament. It's time down the floor, give it go. Woo! And it's lively, cramming one home off the Luka Lob. Things looked bleak as they trailed by 15, but Kyrie Irving whipped out his magic wand and conjured 14 points in the final frame. No, you can't! Out of a timeout, a three is drilled by Kyrie Irving. Then came Exum, wielding the dagger with precision. Your defense win the game. He'll make this one. Yes, he will! Yes, he will! The Kings had an opportunity to tie the game, but Harrison Barnes threw it away, essentially sealing their fate for a play-in route. Back to Barnes, over to Ellis. Barnes, oh, and a bad pass into the backcourt! With their fate nearly sealed, Luka made sure to remind the former Kings GM why passing on him was a colossal mistake. He chased it back down, and that was the most anxiety-producing three and a half seconds. <laughs> Over in Denver, the Nuggets were feeling the absence of Jamal Murray like a punch to the gut. Gobert took full advantage of the situation, putting the clamps on Jokic, holding him to a not-so-stellar 11 of 24 shooting. Dead will penetrate, puts it up, swatted by Gobert! As the game slipped out of reach, Ant had a quirky idea to shoot the free throw with his left hand. <laughs> Not seen a lot of action in the period, but we've seen a lot of free throws. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's true. 
<laughs> the Timberwolves waltzed away with a 13-point victory, moving them into a first-place tie and leaving the defending champs in third place. When we visited Indy, the Pacers' redemption against the Lakers continued. The Lakers came out swinging with all the ferocity of a hungry bear. Here's Austin! and they get entertained early. But they didn't know what was coming. They tried to live by the trifecta, but they ended up dying by it, shooting an abysmal 5 of 30 from beyond the arc. The Pacers left no stone unturned, not even a two-handed throwdown, to secure this pivotal game. And AD, and he's going to shoot free throws. How many times on the floor tonight for Davis? Smith didn't play the ball, just made a almost a throwdown play and secure it they did with a commanding 19 point victory but down in miami it was a different story altogether scoot henderson managed to break records for the worst season plus minus in a single game with a jaw dropping minus 58. scoot up the floor lobs ahead intended for murray got out of his fingertips leading to another break and a bryant jam of the blazers need another timeout to get sorted out this crab is ruthless Scoot drives to the rack and self-checks at the rack, and Miami brings it the other way. The Heat surged on to deliver the largest margin of victory in team history, absolutely routing the Trailblazers by 60 points. They say misery loves company. But I'm not sure the Trailblazers signed up for this kind of history-making performance. And in Charlotte, Curry was serving up a feast of humble pie. Final two seconds, Curry three. That's a big shot. That is a big shot. As for Draymond, it seems his most recent counseling paid off as he walked away from a potential scuffle like a true professional. Green and Grant are really tangled up together right now. Oh my goodness, and a foul called on Green! So Green got underneath the step. Two guys that talk just about more than anybody in the league not saying a word to each other. If you end up enjoying this video, please subscribe. It's free and you can always change your mind. Anyways, wherever you are in the world, be the goat of that moment. Stay goated.